Welcome back to our midweek devotional and prayer time here for Austinville Christian Reformed Church. Uh, I actually recorded something yesterday. Uh, I got home, uh, went to upload it, and it was not working. I don't know what happened, um, which is it's kind of disappointing uh, because it was, uh, I just, in my humble opinion, it was the most amazing devotional I think probably has ever been done in the history of devotions. Uh, it was it was funny. It was sad. It was uh, it was thought provoking yet yet accessible. Um, <laughs> uh, it was uh, uh, it, it was whatever it was, um, uh, and and it is now off into uh, whatever happened. I don't know. The light was blinking. It said it was recording, and I got home and I had thirty seconds of fuzz. So I'm back again today on Thursday um, uh, to to try round number two. Uh, and like yesterday, uh, I want to start with a couple of announcements before I get too far into this and forget to make these announcements. Uh, the first of those announcements was that this Sunday, uh, the 19th, we will be celebrating uh, communion here at uh, Austinville Christian Reformed Church. So uh, 9.30 a.m., our usual service time, we will be uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper here. So um, uh, if you are wanting to come and participate in, in the Lord's Supper and take the sacrament with us, uh, we will be here at 9.30 this coming uh, Sunday. Uh, the other is uh, drawing your attention to an announcement that was in the bulletin uh, and will continue to be in the bulletin, and that is Arnold Scopp's memorial coming uh, July 30th. That is a Thursday. It will be Thursday evening the 30th at 5.30 p.m., and it will be held back behind Voss Studios in the Voss Studio Garden area, the same place where we were holding our outdoor services. So, uh, Arnold Scopp's memorial will be Thursday the 30th at 5.30. The family has asked that you would bring uh, lawn chairs, camping chairs, those sorts of things uh, to, to be able to have a seat while you are out there. They'll try to provide some chairs, uh, but if you can provide your own, that will make things a lot easier logistically. Um, so please come and help us to, to celebrate Arnold's life, to uh, share some stories, perhaps shed a few tears, uh, but to also smile. And, and give thanks to our Lord for, uh, for a life well lived uh, and the legacy that he's uh, left behind here in Austinville and, and with his family literally worldwide uh, and to give thanks to our God that he is home uh, with, uh, with the Lord and uh, uh, we can give thanks and celebrate that. Um, and now on to the devotional section that we are getting to. Um, um, my thoughts kind of stem a little bit from uh, from James chapter three. I mentioned before that it is one of my one of my favorite books. I think in in the New Testament, uh, as far as the letters and the epistles go, Gospel of John being my favorite gospel, um, and I think both of them relate on some level as far as just being very very practical, sort of pragmatic books. Be me being a, a practical type person. Uh, and when we talk about this life of faith, uh, what does a life of faith look like? Um, how is it that we live that out? Uh, as James says, to paraphrase a little bit, you can tell me about your faith all you want, but I will show you mine. Uh, and that, that I believe that that practical, very practical application type aspect um, to the book of James is why it appeals to me so much. And, and I think it's an incredibly useful book for us, uh, especially in the world that we live in, uh, in this day and age. And perhaps it's always been like that for the, the 2,000 years that the church has been around, that uh, people wanting to see what our faith looks like, uh, not just to tell them about it, not just to, uh, not just to say that we go to church or that we believe these things, but to actually see us live out the things that we say that we believe in. Um, and as I was uh, looking at, at James chapter three, it was uh, that is that famous section on the tongue that no one can tame the tongue, um, and that uh, in essence what what comes out of our mouths. Uh, the things that our tongue says, that is, that has the potential to do a lot of damage. Um, it also shows what it is that, that's going on inside of us, what it is that is in our hearts. And that uh, parallels quite a bit with uh, Matthew uh, chapter 15, where Jesus is sitting there and teaching and, and he, he's talking to the, to the, the people that are there. Um, and, and, and he says those words that, that it's not what goes into your mouth. It's not that what you eat and put into your body that makes you unclean. Like you, you eat it, it goes into your stomach, and then eventually passes through you. Uh, what makes you unclean is what comes out of you, what comes out of your mouth, because what comes out of your mouth comes out of your heart. Uh, 
So uh, again, it isn't it isn't what we're taking in. He's telling the crowd, "Don't worry about the foods that you're eating. Those things aren't going to make you unclean. What makes you unclean, or or what is a sign of the uncleanness within you, is what comes from your mouth. What the words that you speak, uh, they they speak to what is in you, what is in your heart, um, and and." Reminding me again, just kind of linking those all together with Psalm 119, which we read a couple of weeks ago, that, that uh, we have uh, the Lord's law, His Word is in our hearts. We, we, we cherish those things. We meditate on those things. Uh, we want His Word to be within us because when it is in our hearts, that is what then motivates us. That's what pours forth from us. Uh, what we believe about God to be true, uh, his word given to us, his scripture. It's part of why we have little kids in, in VBS and uh, Awana memorize scripture verses. Because when we have it up here and we meditate on it and we think about it, it makes its way into every fiber of who we are. That, that what then is in us is what will come forth, what we will pour out. Um, and what got me thinking about these sorts of things is, is yesterday I, I had to make a quick trip out to Iowa Falls to do some grocery shopping because uh, I came to the realization that, that uh, you know, dietarily I've got to do something. Uh, my energy levels are down. I'm just feeling kind of funky. And, and, and I think a lot of it probably has to do with not having the world's best eating habits. We don't eat horribly, but, but I have a tendency to, to snack maybe a little more than I should and consume some things that... that uh, well, they taste great, but they probably aren't the best for me if I'm not feeling all my best. And I got to thinking about uh, years ago, we, we had started that paleo diet. Uh, a lot of people are, or have heard of it, at least. And, um, that idea that you eat like cavemen used to eat, because that's, that's what uh, our bodies were designed to be more like that. So not all the processed, packaged foods that we get, not all the refined sugars, but more of the naturally occurring things that you that you find out there if you were to be a hunter-gatherer. So uh, meats and regular vegetables, root vegetables and things like that, trying to, uh, to, to get uh, your body back to just eating more natural food, essentially. Um, and while we were on that diet, I felt the best that I felt in a really long time. Uh, probably weighed the least that I've weighed in, in a really long time. I had a lot of energy, um, but it began seminary again, and another kid was born, and uh, a lot of other factors. It, it was really difficult to maintain that kind of a diet, and so it, it, it slipped, and we started with the packaged and processed foods again. And yes, they're still the gluten-free, because I can't do the wheat thing, but... Um, but it was the, the heavier foods and the, the starchier foods and um, my energy level dropped and not feeling as great and, and all of those sorts of things. And so I got started thinking about what is it that I'm putting into my body? What is it that I'm that as I eat it, it becomes a part of me. And, and maybe that's why I'm not feeling so great, why I'm not getting the most out of, of my physical form that I can is because I'm not putting the best things into it. Um, and that's where my thoughts started going as I was driving out to Iowa Falls to grab some, some different groceries for, for dinner last night and, and for the next uh, several days, some of the meals that we'll be eating. And as I got thinking about that, I started thinking about, especially Psalm 119, um, you know, that, that we cherish God's word and his scripture in our hearts. Uh, um, looking at the, the Old Testament traditions of, of meditating on, on the, 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 the ending verses of, of what we call the Shema from Deuteronomy, uh, that we, we meditate on his words day and night. Um, uh, the, 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 that, uh, that some Jewish practitioners literally would, 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 would strap sections of scripture to the little boxes on their forehead and onto their arms. Um, that they were literally carrying God's word around attached to their bodies um, because it was that important uh, to, to, to be that close to it, to be that one with it, that it would become a part of who you are. Um, so that, that when we get to James 3 and we're, we're, we're looking at the tongue, when we look at Matthew 15 and the things that are coming out of us, what is it that is feeding those things? What is it that, that has fueled those things? What are the things going into us that now are coming out? Um, and, and hopefully what, what a majority of what's coming in is good and wholesome. Um, that it is God's word. Uh, that it is his 
his scripture, his will for our lives, that, that it's God's good and, and pleasing everything that, that comes from God is, is what's, what's here at the core of who we are. Um, but it's, it's all too easy, uh, especially in this world and in, in, in the modern life that we have, is to, uh, is to kind of surrender some of the parts of us that God would love to have control over. That we surrender those to, to other things. Um, that there are parts of us that, uh, that we hold back from God. Um, that his word doesn't have full control. That he doesn't have full dominion over what is going on within us. That, that we're holding things back. Part of our fallen nature, our, our selfish nature, is that, that we, we tend to latch on to things that, that make us feel comfortable. That tend to make us feel good and happy. Uh, and, and while there's a part of us that knows our, our only source of pleasure ought to be God, that our only... Uh, that our only desire should be to do his will and, and to, to see to it that everything uh, about us is, is wholly dedicated to that purpose. But uh, it's not the easiest thing. It's, it's far easier said than, than done. Um, we have a tendency to, to try to take the easier way out or at least the more pleasurable way out. Um, and so sometimes the things that we are surrounding ourselves with, the things that, that are filling us, the things that are, we are allowing into us, are not the greatest things. Uh, what are the voices that we're listening to? What are the things that we are reading? Uh, we, we want to hear things that are going to make us feel good. We want to read the things that reinforce the, the, the beliefs that we already have. Um, whether they're, they're good and wholesome beliefs or not, we, we tend to try to live a life that is comfortable and, and sometimes complacent, uh, but oftentimes we, we want to avoid the struggle, the struggle that comes with growth, the struggle that comes with change, uh, without, even though we might recognize the parts of us that, that aren't what we wish they were, certainly the parts that God doesn't want to be there, even, even when we're aware of them. We have a tendency to try to, to hold on to them, to resist the change that God would like to bring into our lives because uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, change is uncomfortable. Uh, growth is uncomfortable. Uh, when God comes in and tries to refine us, the metaphors that we find in Scripture, it, it, it's, it's the, the, the purification of, of metals. It's, it's a hot burning furnace to, to, to burn away the slag, to burn away the impurities. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is the wind that blows through and, and rips uh, and separates the wheat from the chaff. It's, it's not a pleasant metaphor. Uh, and, and that is that's why we don't like change. Um, change is hard. Change is uncomfortable. But change is the process that gets us to where God wants us to be. So what are the things that we are going to do? What are the steps we can take? How are we going to let in what needs to come in in order to force out the things that shouldn't be there? How do we, how do we engage with, with God's will to change and transform us? How do we allow his light to shine into the darkness and, and rid our inner selves of that darkness? And, and, and the only answer that I can come up with is that uh, we have to be willing. Uh, we have to surrender. We, 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 we really must consciously make the effort to allow God to do the work that he's going to do. That we must pray that. Pray the words, God, transform me and change me. Uh, remove from me, prune from me that which shouldn't be there. That which is not from you. Uh, align my heart and my will more with yours. Fill me with more of you. R remove from me things that shouldn't be there. It, it's a hard prayer to pray, but at times it, it's the prayer that must be prayed. Because um, God wants to continue his work on us. None of us are perfect. None of us will be perfect until that, that, that final day. Uh, until the, the heavens and earth are remade and we are given new bodies, then we will be perfect. But until then, we're all works in progress. Um, and we have to be open and ready and willing to move forward, that God can change us. That way we can be better instruments uh, for him to use here uh, in this world during this life. Um, more able, more willing, more more 
empowered to do the work that, that God desires us to do, to fully live out the faith that we have within us, to fully live the lives God has created us to live. Because uh, if we're living anything less than that, then, then we're failing to live up to the potential that, that, that God sees in us, that we hopefully could and should see in ourselves. So uh, part of my prayer today is, is to, uh, to pray again and, and to continue to pray for, for God's transformative power to come, uh, not just into my life, but into all of our lives, uh, to continue to mold us shape us, uh, prune, and, and burn away the things that, that shouldn't be there so that we can be more like the people God created us to be. Uh, so that is part of my prayer for us today. So let's go ahead and join together now in a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, you have called us to be your people. You have invited us to, to work alongside of you as you work in us and work through us, that your will, your plans, your purposes are, are done here uh, during this lifetime, here in this place, on this earth. We desire to be your human agents, those who carry the gospel message forward, those who shine with, with the light of your love, mercy, grace, justice, peace, truly your body, your hands and your feet, doing all that, that you desire to see in this world done through us. The only way that can happen, God, is if we get out of our own way, fully opening our lives, our hearts to you. Holy Spirit, come upon us, dwell more fully within us, remove that which is within us that prevents us from being who you created us to be, from living the lives that you have, have made us to live, that we can be more effective for you and for your kingdom and to bring you all of the glory as we reach out to those around us, as we seek to transform this world in any way that we can, to make it a better place, not just for ourselves, but for all of those that you call your children. So we ask for your transformative power to come, to come upon us. Uh, open our eyes, open our hearts, help us to see the things that must change, the things that we, we need to remove, uh, the habits, uh, the practices, whatever it might be, reveal them to us. Uh, help us to make it through this time of transformation. Uh, it will be uncomfortable but it is part of becoming who you desire us to be. And that is what we truly desire, to, to worship you and to live lives that are, are worthy of the calling of being your people, your children. We give you thanks that you have not given up on us, that you love us the way we are, but you will continue to change us. Help us to be always open to that, more open to your will and to your leading in this life. Father, we give you thanks for the many blessings that you have poured out on us. The, uh, the gift of, of birthdays. Uh, we had Jasmine's birthday on Sunday, Chick's birthday yesterday, and, and an actual birthday, uh, uh, well, yesterday as well, last, last night. We give you thanks for uh, Jana and Doyle, um, for their daughter Erin and the birth of, of her daughter Tatum Rose. We give you thanks for a new life. We give you thanks for a healthy mother and a healthy baby. Uh, we pray that they would be able to, uh, to uh, head home uh, whenever that might be, to, to begin their lives as a family, um, that all would go well with uh, everything in the hospital and that they would soon uh, be able to trans transition to a little more comfortable place um, and to be a family in their home uh, for the first time. We give you thanks for a successful delivery and Lord, we ask that you would continue to look over both of them, that mother and baby would recover from this uh, and, and get back to, uh, back to being able to, to live and to enjoy this new uh, core family unit. Uh, 
Uh, we pray for the family that surrounds them, that they would love them and support them and help lead and guide them as they, as they are new parents. Um, so we give you thanks for the birth of Tatum, and we give you thanks for all that you will do through her. Uh, we, we look forward to the, the joy, the blessing that she is and will continue to be. Uh, we also give you thanks for, for Easton, for his return home from the hospital, uh, that he too will be able to grow and thrive as a young infant, uh, and to bring joy to his family. Uh, for Dale and Phyllis, uh, their granddaughter, uh, we, we give you thanks. We continue to watch over all of them in the family as they, as they celebrate uh, the birth of, of, of Easton. We give you thanks for those in our community who are recovering from, uh, from various illnesses and surgeries and, and all of the things that have gone on within the last few weeks for, for Jason Cope, uh, for the heart attack that he suffered a few weeks ago. We, we give you thanks that Jake and Terry were able to spend some time with him, that he himself is now also home. Uh, we continue to pray for Steph's cousin and the brain aneurysm and the further treatment uh, for, for brain-related uh, injuries, uh, we give you thanks, though, that he is entering into a rehab program to try to regain some strength and get reconditioned for, for whatever the next steps are as they lie ahead. Um, for Ron's granddaughter when, and her pneumonia as she recovers from that, may there be no further complications or, or any uh, lasting and lingering uh, effects from, from this COVID-19. We continue to heal her body and restore her to full health that she, too, can return to a normal quality of life. Um, Lord, for all of those who, who are, are, are sick or injured, um, heal them, uh, be with them, sustain them during this time. Uh, for the doctors and the nurses, uh, for all involved in our medical care, Lord, we give you thanks for them. We ask that you would keep them safe as they perform their daily tasks. Uh, for those who are in areas where uh, where the, the patient count is rising because of this virus. We ask that you would keep them safe, uh, help them to perform the duties that are necessary to, to save lives and to make people more comfortable as they encounter this virus and, and hopefully will heal from it. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the, the good news of a potential vaccine entering into final stages of testing. Uh, may everything go exactly as, as is needed. Uh, may it be even more effective than, than, the, uh, than the scientists and researchers anticipate that it would be, that it would be available to people sooner than later to help forge a way forward as we look to, to what life looks like with this virus, which is a, a reality of the world we live in. Uh, but we give you thanks that in all this uncertainty, it is you that is in charge. It is your will that is being done, so we rest upon you and your goodness, knowing that your plans and purposes are being worked out, however that might be. While we don't understand it, it is still a source of hope and a source of peace uh, during a, an unsettling and uncertain time. We pray for all of our leaders, especially for school leaders now at this time of year, as they, as they try to craft plans to, to move back into some kind of formal education, whether it's all face-to-face -face or a mix of those, or it's all online and distance type learning, or whatever they're able to come up with. Uh, we know that they are doing it for the best interest of, of the, the faculty, the staff, and the students as well, to try to keep everyone as safe as they can uh, with this very real reality that, uh, that there, is, there is a virus out there that affects all of us in different ways. Some, some may never know, and others, others unfortunately lose their lives. Um, that is the uncertainty that makes it uh, difficult to forge a path ahead. And undoubtedly, people will be, they'll be unhappy no matter what decision is made. Um, but Lord, we know that they are making the, interest, the decision in the best interest of all people involved. Uh, and so Lord, we, we pray for... Uh, uh, open hearts, open eyes, open ears um, to be able to see and to understand and accept the decisions that are made and to move forward together as a community, as a school group, as, as, as your, not just your people, but as, as people here in Iowa, people in, in the United States of America, people on this earth who all, 
when we get down to it, we all desire the same thing. Um, we want to live peaceful, happy lives. We want peaceful, happy lives for those that we love and care about. Um, we're not really all that different when you when you when you look at it. That's that life and happiness for all of us boils down to some some really just basic necessities. And it's those things that, that drive us. Um, and so we pray that that would be, that would, that would always be at the forefront of, of our minds as we, as we engage with one another uh, in this turbulent time. Um, that there is far more that unites us than actually tears us apart. There's far more that draws us together than pushes us and divides us. And so we, we pray for your spirit of unity and peace during all the decisions that need to be made for the schools, for businesses, uh, for our state, for our country, for the world. May your peace and your comfort uh, be, be evident in, in all that is done, all that is said. May your will be clearly known to all our leaders as we as we look forward to to forging ahead um, doing what is necessary that that a quality of life could be maintained for everyone to keep everyone safe and healthy wh whatever that might be but ultimately once more lord we recognize it is all in your hands so we turn all of this over to you we we humbly submit to you. And we look forward to the way that you will answer these prayers, to the answers that will be what we don't expect, but perhaps far better than we ever could have imagined. For sometimes that's just how you work. It is a mystery, but we love you for it. In your name, we lift all of these prayers and we give you thanks. Amen.